In the game of life, one important thing can increase your chance of success. Confidence. Confidence is the game changer. Confidence! Where do I find that, Jose? First rule, you need a goal. I don't play soccer. Nice color. Right? But not that kind of goal. Mm. What do you want from life? Happiness. Success. Checkmate. Less worries. Next, you need a strategy. I gotcha. Like a game plan. Exactly. Put in the work and stick to it. Nothing pays better. Trust me. <laughs> then you need to be patient. How patient? More patient, success cannot be hurried. And most important of all, you need the right team behind you. Do all these things and you will have the financial confidence to achieve anything. Anything? And everything, my friend. Well, welcome to the Western Cape Teachers Forum, a platform where we educate, empower, and excel. Now, ladies and gentlemen, tonight we're speaking financial wellness because wellness is something that is very important for this platform. Uh, you would remember a couple of some weeks ago we had Feel Good Friday and Northwood Primary School last week had uh, contributed their dance video just to encourage us a little bit in a time like this. And so, and I'm sure that all of us have had a do have do have a story to tell about bad financial decisions that we've made somewhere along the line and so that is why we've partnered uh, to this effect with the largest insurance company on the African continent Sunlam to discuss with us issues relating to financial wellness so that you yes you can live with confidence so you'll have to stay tuned to tonight's to tonight's show because we're giving away five Woolies vouchers to the value of 250 rand each now what you have to do to to to, to get your get a hold of one of those you need to answer five very simple questions we will flag those questions at the bottom of the screen um, as the presentation goes after the national uh, from Sunlam's a very short presentation. So please stay tuned and make sure that you get your hands on one of those 250 Woolies vouchers. Like the saying goes, if you're in it, you must be in it to win it. Well, so tonight we are chatting to a financial planning expert. He's a national business development manager at Glacier, a division of Sunlam. He looks after the public and private sector markets and he's been with the company for 23 years or with the sector. He's worked, for example, at Alexander Forbes and Metropolitan Odyssey. And of course, he has extensive experience in the Government Employees Pension Fund. Dinesh, welcome to the Western Cape Teachers Forum. And yeah, how's things from your side? Great, thank you. Um, the weather's um, warming up a bit, but then I believe we're getting another cold front coming through again before we pack, before we can pack our warm clothing away. But yes, we fit and ready to, um, uh, to 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 enjoy this session today with you. All right, that I tell you what, I'm in the Western Cape, and I tell you the Western Cape is freezing cold. I've got a heat on either side of me, and so uh, if the if the screen shakes a little bit, please don't don't take it. To, yeah, it's, it's really cold where I'm from, so I'm hoping how tank treats you well. Listen up, before we get going, um, tell me just a quick uh, question: How did you quick? How did you get into the financial sector? Just very quickly. Okay, so um, you know we always had a passion for wanting to be wealthy, wanting to be rich, like uh, and dress nice and. Um, have everything that we can afford and you know we learn from other people's mistakes that um, you know we've seen people uh, you know in real poverty and um, you know growing up we asked the questions how can I what can I do differently not to be in that situation I mean life wasn't easy back in the day we had to really work hard at school and try and be better than what our parents um, uh, have done but also I've learned from other people's mistakes and I realized that I've got a passion for helping people and hence I decided to enter into the financial services industry to make a difference in people's lives. Okay, that's fantastic because I can tell you, we all need some sound financial advice at some point. I've made some horrible mistakes in the past where finances are concerned, but I'm hoping that tonight I'm going to be edified and educated so that I can excel. Now, um, I'm gonna, whilst you get ready for to, to put your, your presentation up, uh, why did the businessman throw all his money in the river? Uh, I'm sure you wanted to see how fast this money could uh, could run or to <laughs> to flow. <laughs> yeah, he wanted to see his cash flow. <laughs> cash flow. <laughs> yeah. Almost right. there. 
Well, Dinesh, I'm going to give it over to you to, to show us exactly, give us some tips in terms of how we can retire with confidence. And it's not just for our 50s and plus, it's for our youngsters as well. Somebody said the minute you start earning a salary, you must plan for that for that old age of retirement. So, uh, yeah, let's, let's, let's sponge off your wisdom tonight. Yes, 100%. Thank you very much for the opportunity, Lee. And to all your guests tonight, um, you know, I'm going to share something with you that's going to help empower you to make the right decisions so you can save with confidence, retire with confidence, and make calculated decisions, um, you know, as you reach uh, retirement or you are about to retire. So just as a disclaimer, I'm not going to be selling any products. I'm from an insurance organization called Sunlum, and um, we're just going to share information with you. I'm going to share a presentation as well. And um, while I get my presentation up, um, I think you're also welcome to post any questions in the chat box um, or any comments if you'd like um, with regard to what I'm presenting on. But um, I assume that most of you are public servants and members of the Government Employee Pension Fund. And the moment you started working, you, when you earned your first paycheck, there was a portion deducted and contributed towards your retirement fund. Most people don't even know they have a retirement fund until they're ready to retire. And it's important to build a strong relationship with a financial planner very early in life so that you can make the right decisions. Now, many people retire in South Africa and not everyone retires successfully. So I'm going to share some stats with you in terms of, you know, post-retirement uh, circumstances that take place, the realities of post-retirement living. 51% of South Africans who retire cannot make ends meet. The cost of living is quite high. The electricity uh, cost has gone up by almost 15%. If you're on a prepaid and you notice what you're paying for electricity right now, it's quite bad. Cost of food, the cost of general living has gone up, so retirees cannot make ends meet. 33% of South Africans who retire, retire with debt. Now, as we get older, we want to live in the bigger house, we want to drive the bigger cars. And, you know, I've been working with public servants since 2003. And most public servants, when they retire, they want to buy the nice car or they want to, you know, extend their houses with their gratuities and stuff. And they have many goals. But by the time you retire, or at least five years before you retire, if all your debt is settled, then you can retire comfortably. In that last five years, until you reach your retirement age, you can then you know, save a, a lot of your cash for other goals that you wish to you know, fulfill in your life. You have a bucket list and you want to make sure that it's sorted out. But at the same time, make sure that you retire with debt free. Your housing loan, your, your clothing accounts, your children's student uh, fees, all that should be paid off you shouldn't have any of those things. 33% of retirees don't have enough funds to cover medical expenses. Now, when you retire, and most people that do retire in the public sector, who are members of the Government Employee Pension Fund or one of the medical aids they belong to, medical aid is very expensive. And when you retire, you need to make sure that you're on an appropriate medical aid scheme that you can afford and that will cover you for any um, illness or procedure that you have to go for. So. What, what we notice in the industry is most people cancel their medical aids, the comprehensive medical aids, and then they purchase hospital plans and health insurance and stuff like that. But the day you have to, you, you're faced with a mild procedure that you have to go for or a big procedure like a heart bypass, you know, you're not going to have enough money. And if you have to go to a public hospital, you might have to wait a few months in the queue before you are attended to. And then 61% of retirees are unable to save for any day during the retirement. So even when you retire, you still have goals, you still have a life. You still have things to do, and you may not have enough capital to cover some of those needs, traveling on holiday, seeing to certain goals, your bucket list, as I mentioned. So you want to save towards that. And then 53% of retirees have adult dependent children to support. Now, this is a growing factor in South Africa because last year, due to retrenchments, almost 2.2 million people were retrenched. And this year, almost 1.5 million. And we've seen about two weeks ago where the unemployment rate has increased about almost 2%. So there's a huge concern in the country. And you've seen government talking about pensions and trying to get access to a portion of the money to get people out of debt. And, you know, so people can, you know, change their lives and, and, and come out again. But however, when people do get retrenched, most people lose their houses, their cars, and most of the pension monies are used to settle some of the debts and get them out of trouble. So they are not blacklisted and stuff. But most of them end up moving in with their parents. Now, when you're retiring, you need to make decisions now based on your children that you have to look after. And you want to sort of try and be free of those type of things. But it's unfortunate that sometimes you cannot control it. 
No matter who we are, everyone faces certain risks during retirement. Inflation risk, as I mentioned, cost of living, everything is going up and our money is not keeping up with inflation. The cost of food, if you go to Discam and stuff, and you know the cost of medication has actually increased as well. Longevity, how long are you going to live? Now, working in the public sector, you are the most dedicated people to your careers and to the organizations you work with. I do many presentations to public servants in many different departments, SAPS, teachers, um, um, SANDF, correctional services, and other government departments. And what I find is you are so loyal that most of you have, some of you have 45 years of service. And I normally ask public servants, what have you been doing there for 45 years? What's so nice that keep you there? But it's a passion and you stay there and you stay there for that long time. However, you know, in the last couple of years, some research has been done and they found that a large percentage of public servants die within the first five years of going on pension. So you need to plan on what are you going to do in retirement? You know, that's going to keep you living longer. And most people that retire today don't have any plan on what they're going to do. Death, we don't know when we're going to die. COVID has come, it's taught us many lessons. Some of us never thought we would die. And unfortunately, COVID has taken certain people that, would, that is still shocking. We all have lost family members, we've lost friends, and you know we don't know if tomorrow is guaranteed. But to protect yourself against COVID and stuff, you know, keep your mask on, go for your vaccines, make sure that you uh, wash your hands regularly, sanitize, and then investment risk. Working with public servants, most of them don't like to you know, take risky investments. And if you need advice, you need to speak to a financial planner who will guide you in terms of the risk that you can take in order to grow your capital and to grow your investments. And from a young age, if you build a relationship with a financial planner, they could help you to cover any shortfalls as I presented in the first slide. You want a sustainable income when you retire. If you're retiring in a government employee pension fund, you wanna make sure your, your income grows uh, above inflation. And, you, and if you do retire with an external insurer, you wanna also make sure that your income is guaranteed and if you invest in part of your capital, you're getting growth on your capital and your money's keeping, you know, above inflation. At the same time, when you talk about longevity, I just want to stress around this, you know, before you make any financial decisions, before you sign on the dotted line to take retirement or to, you know, to finalize your financials, go for a full medical, know what your status, what your medical history before you make any financial decisions. OK, I've no, I, I, I come across many clients who have retired already and then they go for a medical and they find that um, you know they've got cancer and many uh, certain other dreaded diseases and the doctors cannot guarantee how long you're going to live and i've seen some of those clients come to us and they say can you help me i need to speak to the government employee pension fund i want to reverse my decision i want to change my choices that i've made because if i die what about my legacy and all those type of things talk about inflation this is um, an example of inflation inflation is when you paying 15 dollars for a 10 dollar haircut that you used to get for five dollars when you had hair so yeah, and then some of you that were around in 1970, you could have bought a vehicle for a thousand rand and every 10 years, this is how your money, the buying power of your money has reduced. 10 years later, in 1980, a motorbike, in 1990, a bicycle, in 2010, a, a pair of uh, running techies, and in 2020, if you come to Gauteng, to Santon City, you will find a few um, boutique stores where you could pay over a thousand rand for these, uh, uh, for these socks. But I always ask these people, is there some massaging mechanism in that uh, socks that can um, you know, massage you, but unfortunately it doesn't. So if we look at some of these items today, uh, you know, some people who do ra road racing or mountain biking, their bikes, their bicycles cost over 100,000. I joke with them and ask them what engines does it have? And they'll just laugh at you and say, no, it's a mountain bike. But even if you're buying sneakers for your kids today, they're in excess of 2000 rand. Life has really become expensive. How long? What does longevity risk really mean? Now, this is stats that came out from stats, I say the recent stats, and the average male and female when they retire, the average male would live to 62.4 years, and the average female used to live to 68.4 year, uh, years. Because of COVID and the number of people that have died, um, our life expectancy has reduced by three and a half years. So some of us might be blessed with more years and we may live longer, but you need to make sure that your finances also last you for a longer period of time, but also we need to change our lifestyles. You know, what are you gonna do in retirement is very important. What are your plans? If you don't have a plan, put down some plans, make some plans with your spouse, decide what you're gonna do in retirement, uh, have a purpose in retirement. Retirement doesn't mean you must go and die. Retirement means you must go and live, okay? So when you retire and you get up every morning, you must have a purpose, you must have something to do. You've acquired a skill uh, during your lifetime of working for the public sector, you can now use that skill to give back to your community, join your church organization, NGO, 
and make a difference in people's lives. Mental fitness, physical fitness will keep you going for a very long time. How much income do you need when you retire? This is important to know long before you decided to retire. A lot of public servants make massive mistakes. They don't make calculated decisions. You'll find that people, um, a lot of public servants who come to us at Sunlam, they want to retire and I ask, how old are you? They said, no, I'm 55. And I said, but you're still young. Why do you want to retire? And they look at me and they, you know, they sort of upset and they say, how can you ask me a question like that? And they said, no, I'm sick and tired. And they tell me they're sick and tired in Afrikaans. And, um, you know, when, when people are sick and tired in Afrikaans, you can make mistakes. And even we as financial planners, we try to calm clients down and say, relax. What I normally do from my side, I ask you for a copy of your payslip. I look at how much cap leave days you have. And if you've got enough cap leave days to take two months off away from work, apply for the cap leave. Your principal or your um, the head of the department will allow you to take some leave. You go in, you relax. Uh, switch your cell phone off. Don't phone uh, Lee at the, at the office and ask him, Lee, how's it going there? What's happening here? You know, wanting to know what's going on. Just shut down. I promise you, you're going to feel less sick and tired. Now, we know what that sick and tired in Afrikaans uh, word is in South Africa. It might go into the dictionary very soon because a lot of public servants are hot for and that's the, that's the word. I just had to break free and, um, and say that. So people are hurtful. They make mistakes. So if you're hurtful, take a break. You'll feel less hurtful. You come back to work. You might tell Lee, listen, Lee, I'm going to work for another three or four years until I'm hurtful again. And then we can revisit the scenario. But also when you're doing these calculations, you know, certain government departments have offered early retirement without penalty. And people don't calculate. You know, if your last paycheck is 10,000 rand per month, for example, People now sign the documents, they go on retirement, they leave the last day, and in the retirement, they get their first uh, paycheck from the government employee pension fund. Boom, what happened? I think you made a mistake. You go back to GEPF, you say, listen, I was earning 10,000, now you're paying me 5,000 a month, what happened? GEPF will tell you, listen, yeah, you took a gratuity, your, um, the capital that was left, your actuarial interest value wasn't enough and bought you an income equivalent to 5,000. Oops, sorry, I didn't know that. Can I reverse my transaction? No, you cannot reverse your transaction. And then there's a number of people who are so hard for, and it's a concern at the moment in the public sector, or specifically in the government employee pension fund. And you'll notice you might get invited by the GEPF for a roadshow that's taking place in certain provinces. And it could be a virtual roadshow as well. And they're talking about, you know, being, you know, what's the tax implications of cashing out? Now, as much as we as financial planners try to save you from the tax implications, a lot of people say, listen, yeah, I'm so hard for right now. Please, when my money's in my bank account, I will contact you. And only when the money hits your bank account, you realize how much tax you have paid. And you go to GEPF and you come to Sanlam and you're trying to reverse those transactions. Remember, once SARS got their money, they're not going to reverse this transaction. So no matter who you are, everyone needs to make certain decisions about retirement. You need to, you know, most of you want a guaranteed income when you retire. You don't want stress about your income. You want to protect your capital, any part, part of your capital that you're investing. And you want growth on your capital as well. Your financial planner will help you with the growth and how to protect your capital and how to also make sure that your income is guaranteed should you decide to retire outside. Now, another reason why public servants come to us, they're concerned. You know, a lot of them are, so, so, so you'll notice in this, in this presentation, I'm not gonna talk about anything negative about our government, the GEPF, the PIC, the Zondo Commission. I'll leave you to watch all that. We get, I get a sermon every day from my clients who tell me every negative thing in the book why they don't want to retire in the government employee pension fund. And I give them the other side of the story as to why the government employee pension fund is not a bad place to retire because they do offer great benefits. But one of the biggest reasons why people want to move out of the GEPF when they retire is because of legacy. You are concerned that if you die within the first five years, um, you know, what will happen to your capital? If you die after five years, well, why is there no legacy for your beneficiaries? But yes, those things are very important. And you need to understand, if you want to leave a legacy, start your financial planning early with your financial planner. There are many other solutions that Sunlam has to offer for you to leave a legacy. So you don't have to use your pension money to leave a legacy for your beneficiaries. But you can also use your, your gratuity and invest it. If you're debt-free, you can use a massive part of your legacy to, to, be, to invest. And should you pass away in retirement, you could leave that uh, gratuity or that lump sum as a legacy for your beneficiaries. So this is the realities of retiring with the Government Employee Pension Fund. I just wanted to touch quickly through this. If you retire in the GEPF, you guarantee your annual increases. The increases are based on 75% of inflation of CPI. But in the last three years, I've seen the Government Employee Pension Fund board has been very generous. They've actually given above inflation increases. So it hasn't been bad. This year, there was an increase of 3.2%. But if they had applied 75% of inflation, the increase would have been around just under 2.4%. So we would have been very unhappy 
uh, pensioners. Remember, there's 450,000 pensioners collecting a pension from the government employee pension fund. If you retire in the government employee pension fund, you qualify for medical aid subsidy. Now, it's important to understand that the in-service benefits and the in-service subsidies are different to your post-retirement subsidies and your post-retirement benefits. So if you want to know more about that, make contact with your Sunlong Financial Planner. They will calculate and show you these numbers using your payslip because all this information is there. Now, the this medical aid subsidy you will qualify for when you retire is anything between 1,480 rand to 2,300. And depending on which medical aid you are on. So most people are down gems, you qualify for 2,300. And if you're on any, other, any of the other medical aids, you're looking at an estimated 1,480 and I just rounded off to 1,500. If you've got cap leave, now, if you've been around for pre-2003, um, you joined long before that, you would have cap leave on your payslip. I mentioned cap leave. I normally advise people, you know, if you're really feeling stressed out, um, use your cap leave, go on leave, you know, block all the noise out. You, when you're feeling less hot for, you might come back and stay on for another two or three years or four years. Um, and, but there's a basic calculation that we will help you to calculate what the value is of your cap leave as well. And remember, the cap leave is not paid by the GEPF. This is paid from the cost center of the department that you work for, okay? Pension will continue to your spouse. Now, this is a very important factor to take into consideration as well. Um, if, you, if you pass away in retirement, your spouse will either get 50% or 75% as a monthly income for the rest of their lives until they pass on. Now, it's important for you to make the right decisions and to let your spouse know which option you are leaving for them. Because at the GEPF, on a monthly basis, we find a lot of unhappy spouses who are there complaining, my spouse was earning 10,000 a month, why are you giving me 5,000? And the GEPF um, uh, admin, admin staff will tell your, 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 your surviving spouse, sorry, your, your, the deceased spouse chose this option. Now you're lucky you're not around because this spouse is really you know, very, very unhappy at that moment. But it's important to also know, even if you're retiring in the fund, in the GEPF, if you had chosen the 75% option for your spouse income, what impact would it have? Yes, there will be a slight impact on your income, and it's not that much. Compare the two, get the calculations, request the quotations from the Government Employee Pension Fund, they will give it to you. If you don't get it from them, speak to your financial planner. <clears throat> Within Sunlum, we have educated our financial planners on how to do these calculations and these numbers, and they will show you the difference. You will get a bigger gratuity, slightly lower income, but with the bigger gratuity, you can make up the shortfall for that income as well. Then at death, now the government employee pension fund guarantees your pension for the first five years. However, they also guarantee that you earn your income until the day you die. So what happens in the first five years is if you die within the first five years, they will take your monthly income multiplied by the remaining term of that five years and pay that as a lump sum to your beneficiaries. So it's important to understand how that benefit works. But because if you... If you, if you overlive, God blesses you with more years and you live over five years, you die in year six or seven, then there's no lump sum to be paid out to your beneficiaries at all. This is what the Government Employee Pension Fund offers you if you die in retirement. Your spouse will qualify for 50% or 75%. If you've got children under the age of 22, um, you know, they will qualify for a child pension benefit. This is one of the best options or the best benefits that a Government Employee Pension Fund offers. So if I come across anyone that's retiring, you married, You've got young children under the age of 22, and there's a small percentage of clients who are retiring in the public sector who do have children under the age of 22. I've come across a client not so long ago. He's got a three-month-old baby. He's 63 years old. He's about to re he wants to retire now. And my advice to him is to stay in the Government Employee Pension Fund. So we will do whatever we can to convince you. However, if you're still not convinced and you still want to move your money to an external insurer, one of our financial planners will assist you and make sure that you know, um, your, your needs are met. So if you look at his benefits, your spouse will get either 50 or 75%. If you've got five children or more, and that's a good thing about the GEP, they don't limit you to how many kids you can have when you're retiring, okay? So five children or more, 10% each. As the fourth child turns uh, 23, the amount adjusts to the next four is on 12.5%. As the fourth child turns 23, it adjusts upwards. And then the last two children left will each get 25%. And then in terms of mortality, I mentioned, you know, look after your health, know what your health status before you make these financial decisions. Um, mental fitness, physical fitness. Uh, during COVID now, it has taught us, you know, we need to keep our lungs healthy and, our, and, and, and be safe. Um, but at the same time, retirement means you must go and live. So make sure you make the right decisions. So these are the options that are offered, you, uh, offered to you when you're over the age of 55 in the Government Employee Pension Fund. Some of you, if you are, if you are a uniform member, your retirement age is 60. And if you're working for any of the other government departments outside of uniform, uh, your retirement age is 65. 
So if you've got less than 10 years of service, okay, if you, now this is you retiring with the fund. If you've got less than 10 years of service, GEPF will give you a gratuity. It's the equivalent of your entire actuarial value and there's no monthly income. If you've got more than 10 years of service, you get a lump sum and then you get a monthly income until the day you die. Now, the only time you can qualify for medical aid subsidy if you've got more than 10 years, more than 15 years of service. Now, there's a few social media um, uh, programs or, or support structures around on Facebook and uh, Twitter and stuff. Just be careful which one you are on. You know, I've, I've seen this weekend, a lady who was 56 years old said, I've got 25 years of service. I'm, I'm really, I had enough now. I want to leave. Uh, and she's asking for advice. Should I take my money and go uh, cash it out or should I re take early retirement? And 90% of the people that gave advice on that platform advised her to take her money. So one, one gentleman said, you'll only live once. Take all your money, cash it in and you'll enjoy your life. Once the monies are finished, you've always got a plan B. You can join Sasa. And, um, you know, I, I was quite disgusted by some of the advice. But these advice are coming from government employees who are your colleagues. Please make sure you're getting advice from a qualified financial planner. Do not get advice from any colleagues or anyone that's not qualified to give advice. The second option is resignation and cash out. This is on an increase. And we're trying to, uh, in the government employee pension fund and the financial services industry, is trying to get to most people to educate them about the tax implications. You know, at the end of the day, if a lot of people cash out and panic to settle their debts and to get out of the trouble. And you'll see questions on, on Facebook, on many other platforms. Um, you know, it, it, it's really scary that people are not calculating, uh, making calculated decisions. The last option is to resign and transfer to an external insurer. Your funds will be transferred tax-free to an external insurer of your choice, be it Sunlam. The, the rules of the government employee pension fund will be moved over to, uh, to Sunlam. You will still qualify for your tax-free benefits. Now, you are public servants, right? You have, over, when you're retiring, over and above the 500,000 tax-free, you also qualify for the pre-1998 tax-free benefits. So, you know, you still can use those benefits to settle any debt or to buy you a discretionary income that can guarantee you a, 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 a tax-free income. So from a tax planning point of view, your financial planner will be able to assist you to adjust that. And then you get a gratuity and with a balance, you can then combine it into a few different income solutions that Sunlam has to offer uh, and not just one solution as you will find only in the government employee pension fund. But remember, you know, everyone is different. We all have different needs, different choices. And, um, you know, some, some people will stay in the fund, which is the best. And others might decide to move out for other reasons, but we've got many solutions to assist you when you're making those decisions. I'm just, I don't have much time left, but I'm just gonna try and go through these scenarios quickly. So over 23 years, I've, I've been in this industry. Since 2003, I've been working with public servants. We put together this um, four scenarios. These are people that I visit and I meet in the public sector. And I just want to quickly go through them quickly. And you'll find, you might place yourself into one of these scenarios, which will guide you in terms of decision-making. But you will also see that, um, you know, it, there's good reason for some of you to retire with the government employee pension fund. So I'm not going to talk ill of that side. But be careful of financial planners out there who are, or financial advisors, I would call them, who are using all the scare tactics in the book to scare people to leave the government employee pension fund to move their money out. You've got to speak to someone who gives you all the insights, the advantages and disadvantages between the two. Okay. So in the first scenario, we've got Tabo and Maria. That was 57, a public servant and a member of GEPF. He's married to Maria, 49. They have two children, age eight and 13. Now, yes, this happens, you know, as I mentioned earlier, I've got a client who's got a three month old baby. And in this case, Tabu, the best thing for Tabu to do is to retire in the GEPF. His spouse will qualify for the spouse pension benefit, 50% or 75%. We can give you free advice to make that choice. When you get your gratuity, whatever you use to settle your debt and to put some money away for emergencies, you could then, you know, um, Invest it and make sure that that will enhance your income as well. The, um, the child pension benefit, if you have to die within that first five years or even after five years and your kids are still young at eight and 13, they will qualify for 25% each of the income that you are earning, uh, that Tabu is earning, and that will stop when they reach the age of 23. Tabu will enjoy the post-retirement um, medical aid subsidies offered by the Government Employee Pension Fund, as well as a funeral benefit. Now, remember the funeral benefit in the GEPF is free, right? So when you claim for the funeral benefit, it will be taxed. It's not like your life um, funeral policy that you have. But, you know, as I, as I study and I work with public servants, I looked at a lot of pay slips. Public servants have too much funeral cover. You know, you have maybe five policies of funeral cover, so you're well covered on the funeral side. The second scenario is uh, Peter 63, Constance 58. Constance is a GPF member. They've got three children, 25, 30, and 34. All are financially independent. 
Now, this is every parent's dream to retire with your children being independent. Now, in this case, you don't have to make a decision based on your children. You can retire with the government employee pension fund, enjoy the benefits there. You, your children will not qualify for the child pension benefits. You have the medical aid subsidies that kick in and you've got a funeral benefit. Now, remember, if you want to leave a legacy, you could leave your house and car and stuff. But at the same time, if you die within the first five years, a pro rata death benefit will be paid to your beneficiary, as well as the spouse pension will still kick in as well. But at the same time, some of these clients that I mentioned in point in, in option one, scenario one and scenario two, sometimes says, Dinesh, thank you for this option. You know, um, I appreciate what you've given me, but I still want to move my money out to Sunlum and we will accommodate you and we will give you solutions that are closely resemble what the GEPF is offering you. So you've got your sustainability, uh, your sustainable income, you protect your, uh, your capital, you, grow, you have growth in your capital and your legacy is also protected as well. The third scenario is Dev and Sanusha is about to retire. They've got two children, 32 and 41, uh, both are unemployed. They've got grandchildren. I've seen worse cases where some parents have three or four grandchildren that they are looking after. These type of clients that I've come across in this scenario do not retire with a GEPF. They want to retire outside because they're concerned that if they die, their adult children will not uh, have any money to survive. And because of the unemployment rate, there's no guarantees. So they make an emotional decision based on the children's needs. And you, you I also come across some of these clients, they're becoming wise, you know, they don't leave cash for their children. A lot of clients tell me, you know, if I have to leave 3.2 million rent for my son who's 32, he's gonna buy the sports cars, he's gonna stop drinking water, he's start drinking Johnny Walker, and before you know it, the money's are all finished. So, you know, what, what they do is, our financial planners here at Sunlam, we've got one of the biggest trust companies in South Africa, Sunlam Trust. They could set up within your world, build a trust that if you die, the funds can go in there and look after your legacy and specifically after those grandchildren. But at the same time, they would lose out on the um, spouse pension benefit, the child pension. Okay, the child pension benefit will not kick in. So I, I get a lot of questions around the grandchildren. Will the grandchildren qualify for the child pension benefit? They can qualify only if they're legally adopted, okay? If they're not legally adopted, the GEPF is not going to recognize them. So that benefit falls away. And then with the medical aid, if you're on GEMS, GEMS is an open scheme. You could remain on GEMS, pay the premium via debit order, but you're going to forfeit the medical aid subsidy. And um, the funeral benefit will fall away if you transfer out. But as I mentioned, public servants do have a lot of funeral cover. The last option is the amount of single people. And then I'm going to end after this. Um, the amount of single people in the public sector who are retiring, and I get this question often, and I ask them, why don't you retire in the GEP? They said, listen, yeah, you know, I'm going to lose out on the spouse pension benefit. So my answer to people that are retiring is that, you know, if you don't want to lose out on a spouse pension benefit when you retire, and if you are single, um, find a spouse before you retire, nominate them as a beneficiary, knowing that when you pass away, at least someone is going to qualify. And there's a lot of single people out there looking for a spouse that you could benefit on this. But they laugh when we talk about that conversation and they say, no, 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 I don't want to get married again. I don't want to fall into that trap. Um, and most of these clients, you know, the, the single people could have the same scenario as scenario two or scenario three. And in most cases, they would retire outside to, you know, to leave a legacy for their beneficiaries, to be in control of their own money and to make sure they have a sustainable income, protect the capital, have growth and you know, to protect the legacy on its own. So, yes. That's the end of my presentation. I hope it added value to you and you enjoyed the conversation around this. Um, remember, the, if, you, if you are ever offered early retirement without penalty, first consult your financial planner. Make sure you make all the calculated decisions before you write on a, sign on a dotted line. Don't have regrets. And you know, do not spend your money on the things you don't need to impress the people you don't like because you will regret it. I've seen, you know, and if there's a lot of teachers on this platform, I must just say this early. Um, you know, teachers want to drive the Mercedes Benz and the MLs when they retire and they use the gratuity to pay for those type of things. Please do not, do not regret, after three years, if you need to replace tires, a tires on an ML is worth over 46,000 Rand. And when you go and buy tires, you're gonna tell the gentleman at the tires company, I don't want Megs, I want tires only. And he's gonna say, man, that's the price of the tires only. And all of a sudden you're gonna tell your family, no, I'm going to trade this guy in, man. It's not moving really nice anymore because you don't have the 46,000 to buy the tires. <laughs> well, thank you for that. Sir. Well, oh, Dinesh, that, that was that was that was fantastic. Well done. Uh, a, a couple of points stood out for me. You know, the Afrikaans word for fed up. <laughs> That's the one thing. And then, of course, you mentioned that uh, stop drinking water and drink Johnny Walker. And that that is the thing with money. You know, if you're not used to the, the those big amounts of money, it makes us do silly things. And that is why it's important that we need some shrewd financial advice. And then um, another thing that stood out for me. Uh, 
was retirement means you must go and live. But but before I get into that one, I just want to remind our our viewers on on on, on our live streams, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, there are five Woolies vouchers up for grabs, each to the value of two hundred and fifty rand each. And you have to answer those five questions that are rolling at the bottom of your screen. One, what is the legal retirement age in South Africa? The Nash picked up on that one in the presentation. Secondly, what is the normal retirement age in the public sector? Uh, so you must put your answer the letter first. A and then your answer B your answer and then the third one what is the penalty for early retirement for those of us who tuned in very carefully and then fourthly right at the beginning of the show there was a football coach that featured at the beginning um, in that Sun Lama uh, ad um, if you can remember please put that person's name there next to the letter is a D and then lastly the last question is what are the founding principles of the Western Cape Teachers Forum? I normally start the show off saying, welcome to the Western Cape Teachers Forum, a place where we, and I and I mentioned three words, and it all starts with an E. I'll give you that as a tip. So please um, see if you can, 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 can give those answers. The first five people to answer them correctly, you will be the, the, the winners and the recipients of the 250 Woolies vouchers. Now, Dinesh, while the people are getting ready and, and putting their inputs over there, I want to check in with you. you know, there's so many teachers for example that once they've retired or they've resigned they come back into teaching to work up until they cannot do so anymore is it i mean have you seen that as a, as a common phenomenon in your in, in your experience yes yes no definitely thank thank you for that you, you know there's some research done as to why people die why so many people die in retirement and there's there's a term that psychologists refer to as a social psychological impact that catches up with people in retirement that you don't plan for and, and the biggest killer is depression and loneliness. It's very lonely out there. You know, a lot of people that retire, the first six months they're enjoying their gratuity. It's nice. And all of a sudden it's get, when, when your monies get finished and you have to depend on your monthly income, you know, it's lonely, it's boring there. You need to have something to do. So most teachers come back, uh, Lee, Mr. Principal, please, uh, I want to come back, you know, th through the student governing, teachers governing body or whatever programs you have there, uh, you will then employ teachers. We do have a shortage of good teachers in the country. And, and what will keep you growing younger? You know, you'll miss the stress of the children in the schools. Um, yeah. the, the stress they give you. I know I work with a lot of teachers. They cry sometimes, but when they retire, they miss those naughty children. Uh, they keep you fit. They keep you mentally fit, physically fit. And you it will add a few more a few more years to your life. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. Listen, and then and, and just on, on, on the issue of life partners, eh? Now, many of us are not necessarily married. And uh, so once I retire and, you know, I, I, I lived with my life partner, I may have, uh, or I may have many life partners, I don't know. Uh, what are the sort of benefits for my life partner should I die post-retirement? So, so, you know, legally, uh, if, if you've got a life partner, you're living with each other more than eight months at least, you're, there's some sort of dependency. And should you pass away, your, your life partner has a right to claim against your retirement fund or your benefits or an income replacement as well. And they can prove it. And if you do retire in a government employee pension fund and there's some sort of dependency like that, the GEPF will investigate. They will come to where you're living, check with your neighbors, get affidavits to see if they qualify. And you know, even if, you, if you've been e-walleting someone money, they can prove that they're dependent on you. Um, so they will you know, have a right to some sort of uh, living income from you. But plan properly, you know. If you yeah. do have a spouse or you do have a life partner and you and you're gonna and something happens in case of emergency, plan for those type of things. Make yeah. provision, leave something behind for your partner. You don't want this thing to go into court and family battles and stuff like that. It becomes too messy. So yeah, plan yeah. plan ahead. Your financial planner will help you to put those plans in. Have a will. Make sure you have a will. Uh, the will is the most important part of your estate planning. Uh, make sure that when you die, all your assets will be distributed according to your wishes. And and you hear so many stories about about sibling sibling rivalry where you know where where wills were not in place and that always uh, oftentimes become very messy and leaves uh, relationship damage uh, irreparably you know so yeah ladies and gentlemen you might be sitting with questions or comments and I mean it's a public platform and so you may have friends and family that are watching you as well if you're not necessarily comfortable in in, in sharing so or some of those questions you may have this little QR code that's appearing on your screen right now. You need to, what you can do is you can scan this code 
with your QR code scanner on your smartphone. And this one, this particular form will then direct you to a little uh, form which where you enter your details and a financial planner or a representative from Sunlam will get into contact with you so that you can start making the necessary decisions or planning in where your financial portfolio is concerned. So please reach out to them. They are more than capable to deal with any questions or comments that you may have. And I understand it's, 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 it's very sensitive topic sometimes. And as I said, this is an open and a public platform. You may not be comfortable to share or ask your question, but this is one way in which your confidentiality can be protected. And then of course, if you find, if you struggle to to access that form via the QR code, please drop us an inbox or comment on the live feed and we will get into contact with you or place you in contact with the right persons. All right, then let's see what our comment feed looks like uh, to see yeah, whether we have any potential um, uh, Just winners. to add uh, some value uh, quickly, you know, if anyone on the platform would like to have a session like this in their private in their private circumstances with their, at, at their offices, with their colleagues, you're welcome to you know put it in your inbox. Lee will make sure that we get all of you, make contact with you, and and deliver on this as well. It's it's quite an interesting conversation. You'll notice that our presentation is very different to what you may have experienced with anyone else. Um, it's just facts that we share with you so that you can make an informed decision. There's no uh, biasness towards Sunlam, and there's no negativity towards the public sector, government, or the government employee pension fund. It's merely information to help you to make an informed decision. Fantastic, Dinesh. All right, let's have a look at who we have on our comment feed here this evening. Well, of course, Ms. Porsche Sassman, uh, live with confidence. Porsche is, of course, um, in the marketing department at Sunlam, and she's a, uh, a very, very trusted partner of the platform and Dinesh's colleague over there. And um, yes, Renal Sampson says, my 20s are littered with unwise purchases. Well, Renal, and for that very reason, that is why we're offering the service to you, so that you can start building and repairing some of those unwise purchases or the effects of that you've made. Dinesh, you want to comment on that quickly? Yes, yes, that's important. You know, you've got to teach your children what's the difference between being rich today in South Africa versus being wealthy. Uh, yeah. Being rich today is being is having a lot of debt, having all the nice gadgets, all the flashy clothing, all the nice things, but you have to service your debts. The moment your financial, your, your income collapses, everything else collapses around you. So young people must learn to save at least, uh, you know, uh, a large percentage of the income, if you can save 20% or, or, or more uh, every month, make it a discipline. And at a, at a young age, you can have your money growing for you um, instead of you having to pay huge interest rates uh, against your debts, credit cards, and all, you know, I would call it evil stuff that really, um, <laughs> now remember, we use all these things to buy the things we don't need in order to impress the people we don't like. It's the biggest mistake we fall into. Yeah. All right. And, and so, I, I mean, I, I, credit cards, I, I mean, it's a, a false sense of security. You know, you've got access to the money that's not yours. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And then live, in, live within your means. Yeah. Do not spend more than you earn. Absolutely. All right. Well, Pamela, Pamela McAvoy says, good evening all. I'm from Highbury, Kales River Teaching at Kales River Technical High School. Well, Pamela, good evening and thanks for supporting the platform. And again, the open the invitation is extended. If you want us to get contact with you, follow that QR code route and we will in, uh, definitely put you into contact with the right persons. All right. And then, of course, now, now we need to sift through the comments to look for those questions that were or the answers. All right. Amy just said, good evening all. Hello, Amy. And then here we go. What Diana Fortune says, I'm one of those who took out an added retirement fund from Sunlam since the first year of teaching. Best decision made, no regrets. I recently increased my monthly contribution to. Yes, Diana is, of course, a departmental head at, I think it's Delft Primary School. Diana is always a faithful follower of this platform. Thank you very much, ma'am. And uh, yes, if you can even add to that, Dinesh. Yes, 100%. Yeah. So you may have a policy with Sunlam. Thank you, Lee. Sorry. You do have, if you have a policy with Sunlam, make sure that you review it every year. Don't just keep paying the premium. Contact Sunlam, contact your financial planner, review your underlying investment portfolio, make sure your money is growing for you. Um, you know, don't just leave it and think everything is good there. Uh, make contact with Sunlam, uh, have a look at your money, review it, do it once a year. Make sure that you're reaching your goals, you're, on, you're, you're, you're within target and you review it every year. Many things change in our lives. You want to change beneficiaries, you want to increase your premiums, you want to you know, save a little bit more and, and just make sure that your money is in the right place, doing the right thing for you. All right. Now let's, 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 let's see. Okay. I've got uh, Crystal Arto. Now question A, she says 60. Uh, what is the legal retirement age in South Africa? Can you verify that? 
Okay, so the legal retirement age in South Africa is 55, and the normal retirement age in the public sector is 60. Oh. Now, your employment, your employment contract uh, for uniform members is 60, and for uh, all other public servants, it's 65. That's the difference. So, so you so, have sorry, to that's not. So that's not the correct answer. All right. <laughs> sorry, Crystal. We we tried. Okay, B. She's okay. So B would also be incorrect, eh? Because B, B, normal B retirement is, age uh, is sixty. No, sixty is correct. Okay. Now B is sixty-five. She had sixty-five. No, no. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. No. A A. Um, yeah, B is supposed to be sixty. Correct. Okay. All right. Tulani says. A is 60 and B 65. I'm, I'm assuming that's also incorrect. No, oh, not sorry. Correct. sorry to Ladi. We tried as in Patlo. Um, okay, even the Nash actually gave the answer. So those who are fast on the fingers, you can actually type it in <laughs> while we while so we do fight. remember that the early retirement is between age 55 and 59. And if it's approved without penalty, then there will be no penalty. But if there's a penalty, if, if you do leave without the without it being approved early retirement, then the penalty will occur for the remaining months in that 60 months. And I'm going to give the answer. The penalty is 0.33% for every year, every month not completed uh, in that term. So if you've got five years, it's almost 20% as a penalty. Sure. But allow so your zero, financial planner to help calculate that for you as well. So it's 0.33% of, of the remaining months over the term of five years. All right. Okay. So there you have it. So again, if your fingers are fast enough, you can, you can, you can, you can get one of those uh, Woolies vouchers before we end the show. All right. Crystal Artok, you had another go at it. Jose Mourinho, that is D. Um, who is the football coach that uh, that's featured in that video? Tanash, can you confirm or deny that one? Correct. Yes. Definitely 100%. Well, well done, Chris Hartlock. You are our first winner. You get a 250 Rand Willis voucher. Somebody will be into contact, will be in contact with you soon via your Facebook Messenger. So watch out for that one. Good uh, congratulations, Crystal. Um all right. Tanya gave it another go. Tanya said 60, 65. That's incorrect. And then C, she didn't know D. She said Ole. No, that's unfortunately not the case. But thanks for trying. <laughs> all right. I want to know who's Ole. <laughs> Okay, then, oh yeah, I think I think the, this seems to be a common one. The sixty sixty five thing um, is uh, yeah. No, we 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 confusing it with the employment contract, you know, which your your retirement age for uniform is sixty, and for uh, all other public servants is sixty five. However, you can retire uh, early at fifty five. That's the legal retirement age, and. Your normal retirement age without any penalty in the public sector in terms of the public servants act is 60 years old okay well thank you very much here we go tayana lorinda fortune she comes in again she says a 55 b 60 c um, a reduction of a third right between early Zero point three three. And yes that's fine and yes so the people winner Yes, and then E, educate, empower, and excel. You got all of them, right? But we only, the Nash, I'll leave it to you. Are we giving a one? Uh, we've voucher. got five vouchers, so we'll give a one voucher as well. <laughs> okay. So, Tayana, you another winner. You've got you, you, you've got to watch out for your inbox uh, on Facebook Messenger for your answer. And uh, thank you very much for joining. I don't see anyone else. Um, oh, we have, Tulani is coming on again. Is Tulani coming on again? Let's give Tulani one other go. <laughs> is it 58? Say that's not correct and b60 okay well 60. They, yeah they so b and c is correct and d is correct so tulani also qualifies for a 250 voucher all right well congratulations uh, tulani Patlwa and mr clint carl so he's the executive officer of uh, conditions of service at naptoza western cape he gives a 50 you want to you want to read that one Dinesh? okay so a is um between 55 and 59 so i'll give him because he's got 55 there yes uh so yes, Clint, you also qualify as well. 100%. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we're going to close it there. I don't know. How many did we give away now? Three or was it three four. or four? I'm not four. sure. Was it, was it four? So four. Okay. All right. Well, if you perhaps jump onto the comment uh, section afterwards, you're welcome to do so. And we'll see if we can if we can uh, disperse that last uh, voucher to you as well. But thank you very much for your contribution this evening. I think it was a, it was well done. Dinesh, once again, you've been absolutely amazing. Uh, you know, this is, this is really uh, some, some, some food for thought. And I think I'm going to be one of those in the line or in the queue to actually uh, get into contact with one of you guys to, to, to put me on the right path in terms of my financial planning in future. I think there's always room for improvement. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. And uh, yeah. 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 Everyone, and everyone on your platform, be safe. 
stay blessed and thank you for the opportunity to present to you. Well, it was only our pleasure. And let me just once again remind the viewers that you have the QR code. I'll put it back on there again. That is a QR code you use to access the form that will be used for our representatives from Sunlam to get into contact with you. If you find that a little bit of a challenge, please uh, put some comments or inboxes and we will put you into contact with the, with the reps from Sunlam. Um, this will be one of many more conversations we'll have on the platform. And so if you may be wondering what you can do to become more, uh, you know, to build your savings portfolio, that's one of the conversations that will be coming up. So keep an eye out on the platform for, for, for that particular show coming up. Dinesh, once again, thank you very much. I think this was well done. And uh, yeah, may you have a fantastic evening all the way out in Centurion. Thank you. Bye-bye. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all we have time for tonight. Thank you once again for tuning in. It was an absolute treat having you on. Uh, see you again next week, same time, same place. Stay safe and God bless. Today, today we make a promise to every man, every woman, and every child on this continent. A promise to do everything we can to give you a feeling of empowerment that comes with knowing you are in control of your life and that you can change the world. You and me? Yes, you. It's a promise to help you attain the kind of confidence that we believe can make a real difference in your life. Financial confidence. What's this? It's knowing that you can look after the ones you love and the things you own. And that you are prepared for the challenges that life may bring. It's the kind of confidence that opens doors and unlocks dreams. Come on. And whether you have a little or a lot, it can help you access limitless possibilities and reach new potential. Cindy Lungi. That's why we'll never take our promise lightly. We'll keep it top of mind and close to our hearts. Everything we do, every decision we make will be guided by it. So that you can live knowing that today is going to be a good day. And tomorrow will be even better.